Ooh, it just said full high definition. That was so <laughs> uncut today. But hello and welcome to our um post Arnold's live, I yeah, guess. Post yeah, Arnold's UK live. Strongman Monday. Probably. Yes. <laughs> Strongman Monday. We're all out of sorts, we aren't are we? Indeed. How is everybody? We hope you all had a great weekend. We know most of you would have been watching the competition live, so you probably had some quite long days too. Especially if you were in America where it would have been a very early start for you. Yeah. I think uh it's about 5 a.m. in some 5 a.m. I think for the first event. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, day two, like day one actually went quite quickly, but day two was much longer, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It but we hope you enjoyed the show. We will get into it in a sec. Let's quickly see who's in the house. We've got Hit Flipping Mama. What a competition. Wow. Grim Reaper Moose. <laughs> Uh, Nolan, another Arnold's where the women's competition was even better. Never seen a closer competition with the top four oh, or five. Oh. More than that, even. Like, <laughs> yeah. You've got to see every single event, the women's standings just chopped and changed. Yeah, it did. Um, it it was was, all over Lucy, who ended up winning, was actually in ninth place at one point. Yeah, going so. into day two, she was in ninth place. I think it was two points between the top four and three points between the top five in the mm. end, something like that. It was um, it was crazy close. Um, I, I think going forward, we're just going to see a lot of really close competitive competitions with the women and, yeah. and, and different women winning each contest. And really amazing to see. Obviously, Lucy was incredible. Angelica, again, doing She's so well. Yeah. I mean, tied on points and obviously losing it on the um, tiebreaker. Oh, God. Sorry. Obviously, we've got the puffy. This is like the witching hour for her as well. <laughs> She's like She's running like, riot. Back nice there. and asleep. And then suddenly it's like, right, time to play. Yeah, time to recap. Yeah. Like, I'm sure she'll be joining us in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> where, where was I? Sam Bellevue. Sam, Nadia, yeah. Yeah. you know, Lucy, Rebecca, Andrea. Everyone has great performances. You know, just so many amazing women competing right now. I yeah. mean, we know others as well that you could add to that list. Yeah, that absolutely. Even there. So yeah. it's exciting times for the women. Let's uh, see if we've got some good prompting questions. We've got a member's comment here from Will. Is Bobby's shoulder okay? Bobby's okay. He had a bit of a, a peck issue. Um, but a couple of days rest, he'll be fine. It's nothing serious, so we'll, we'll be absolutely fine and get him straight into his prep for World's Strongest Man. Mm. The static hold as a decider was great. Yes. Short and sweet and relatively easy on the athletes. Wasn't it good to see a contest finished like that rather than count back or last event? Do you prefer that? I do, yeah. I thought it made yeah. it really exciting to, to the finish. And Lucy's face when she knew she won. Oh, I know. It was a picture, wasn't it? Was, it? it was brilliant. But yeah, I <laughs> liked I liked. Um, it doesn't have to be that, but having a deciding event, I think, is, yeah. is a cool way to finish it off for sure. What event do you think is the most appropriate for that? Sort of thing? I don't think there is. No. I don't. Like, but whatever the event is, it has to be told to the athletes beforehand. Yeah. And this was like uh, it's um, on the rules. Jan Todd has had them. this in the rules at the Arnold's for years now. Yeah. In case there's ever been a tie for first place, it's never happened until no, now. It's the first time. But, um, it's always in the rules. The event is always put in there. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that it can change is not a problem, but the athletes need to know beforehand. Yeah. Now I really enjoyed it too. It gave yeah. us a really exciting finish. Um, yeah, brilliant comp. Having a tie break event was so much better than count back or last event position. Well done, Dr. Jan Todd. Uh, anyone else more impressed by the ladies' competition? I think so many people uh, that kind of really get into the, the women's contest really enjoy watching it. They, they put on a show. There's so much talent. You know, the, the men were amazing, but the men's comp, obviously... <laughs> The, the athletes changed uh, the week before the contest. So there were supposed to be a few more of the top guys, unfortunately, due to injuries or certain different issues. Some of them pulled out last minute. So it turned out to be like a split comp with the men where four guys kind of stretched away from everyone else. Mm. Um, whereas the women was just chop and change all the time. I think there was great performances in both. I mean, just a quick couple of things. Pro probably all you guys are saying this in the comments and we'll get to them in a second. But... Um, a few big points I want to talk about as we go through today. Firstly, Lucas Hatton. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Established himself <laughs> as the real deal is the best way of putting it. I was very, very impressed with Lucas. When someone is, you know, he won America's Strongest Man and he's proven he's a great strong man. He won North but, America's Strongest Man. But to come to a big show like this abroad mm -hmm. asks a lot of questions about this. I've seen many great guys in their own country and, you know, if, when things are perfect, they're good. 
but you get them into the the top level where they've got to travel, they've got to cope with, you know, sleeping somewhere different, going on a plane for however long, you know, nothing is done under your and control. All for the first time. As all well. for the first time, competing against the likes of Hafthor, competing yeah. against the likes of, of Mitch Hooper. He wasn't phased at all. He just it seems like a, a guy that's got his head screwed on right. Amazingly powerful. Mm. The power that he had on that log. Yeah. Just the speed. Yeah. You watch his log reps and you see the speed that is popping off his shoulders. Mm. Just super impressive. And just a, a pleasant guy backstage as well. Mm. I would love to see Lucas get invited to more big shows. He deserves it. He is a fantastic athlete. And, you know, he pushed Thor and Mitch Hooper in this contest. Well, we've already got eight athletes confirmed from the USA for the world's strongest man. But there's no way he's not one of the top eight American strongmen right now. He's Absolutely. easily, isn't he? Yeah. I think like, I've seen this debate about um, America's strongest man should be a qualifier for Britain's strongest man. What do you think about that? America's the, strongest man should be a qualifier for world. Sorry, for, did I say for Britain? Yeah. <laughs> sorry. I just say it's been a very long weekend. <laughs> should be a qualifier for world's strongest man. What do you think about that? <laughs> I, I, I agree. I yeah. do agree. And I, I said to Lucas after the competition, are you going to do OSG? Because right now, OSG is the qualifying. That's the the, the system the that's set out. Mm -hmm. You know, even winning the amateur Arnolds doesn't get you to the to, to world's strongest no. man. Now, the fact is, hopefully, people that are involved will watch what we do. They'll have watched his performance on the weekend and think, "Damn, this guy's good." Mm -hmm. But at the moment, the only qualifying system, if you are up and coming and you want to get to world's strongest man, is OSG. I explained this to to Lucas. Um, at the contest now hopefully from this performance he might get an invite to the rogue invitational yeah. and i think if he ended up getting a, a top three top four position at the rogue invitational eventually you just can't be ignored no when you're you, unavoidable when you, when you just go and win and, and do well you you make yourself unavoidable so there, there does get a point where just no one can avoid you because yeah. you keep you keep winning shows but if you're looking to get to world's strongest man osg is the qualifying route that is laid out that will get you to qual a qualifier to Giants Live, which then top three at any mm. Giants Live qualifies you for World's Strongest Man. The fact is top three at OSG for the last two years has qualified. Yeah. Officially on paper, only the winner is actually not even that. Not even Officially that. on paper, it only qualifies qualifies you for a Giants, a Giants Live, Live competition. But essentially. The, but what we've, we've seen, seen happen is people going yeah. straight through to Worlds. So yeah. wh whether that's right or wrong, that is the qualifying system. Mm. You know, national titles are not qualifying shows for World's no. Strongest Man. And that's the debate in and itself, it, isn't it? Absolutely. Because Britain's Strongest Man, obviously but the whole Britain's Strongest Man goes... is a giant's life. Yeah, I know. That's why. I know. Rightly or wrongly. Yeah. It's the company that have the qualifying system into World's Strongest Man. Yeah. And I love the Giants Live shows. I think they're awesome. But we do need to kind of, you know, look at guys like Lucas and think, this guy, you know, he, he's, he's amazing. People do get invited on merit as well from other parts of the sport. But yeah. I think the unfortunate thing is the timing, the proximity to World Strongest Man yeah. now, and the fact that we've already had eight confirmed. At, at worst, athletes. I'd love to see Lucas get an invite to a Giants Live later in yeah. the year. Yeah, and he could still possibly be invited as the reserve. They okay. usually have a USA reserve on site, don't they? So he'd be Absolutely. perfect for that. Like, I can't imagine anyone better. All right, let's move. Jesus Christ, what's happening? Sorry. Go, go and gonna... see your puppy. Honey, what are you doing? <laughs> Dog yeah. has gone crazy. Ah, good. Nice to see lots of you are agreeing with me about Lucas. I hadn't gone through the um the questions yet, but lots of people wanted to talk about him, so that's good to see. Um, just Sorry. in time. Malcolm's just in time. Should Hello. I bring her on? Yeah. Thank you, Nolan, for gifting memberships on a, being a member for five months. Ah, memberships were gifted, all gifted. Excellent. Oh, Thank you so no, much. She's, she's even too crazy to come on the stream. It's definitely the witching hour. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Let's talk about the tiebreaker. Well, we've just had a little chat about the tiebreaker. We can talk more about it in a little bit. I just want to see who's on. Please. Levi, how you doing, buddy? Hope you're well. So this is something I agree with um, with Laura. Bag throw was a little overstretch, um, but the rest was decent. I I found the bag throw to start with quite boring. I think yeah. Well, and it may be just 
maybe just started a little bit low because the athletes are just too good. But by the end of it, I was well invested. And, you know, yeah. when you saw Sam and um, Lucy just going head to head uh, and it just going up and up and up, that was pretty epic to watch. But yeah, I agree. It probably should have had some bigger jumps just to kind of get through it a little bit quicker. Yeah. But in uh, the organizers' defense, with the men, they've got that history where they know. Where to start? Like, know, we just don't have it with the women. The women are just shocking us all the time. Yeah, what they they're are. They're surprising of. us. Yeah. Every time we see them, they're, they're just blowing it out of the water. You know, yeah. just amazing performances. They get better all the time. And now we're starting to get some real understanding of where they're at. I think, uh, you know, competitions will be better position to pick weights for them exactly. to pick jumps etc yeah but yes I, I agree the women's throw took too long but by the end I thought I it genuinely really thought it was exciting, really really yeah. exciting and I think both Lucy and um and Sam really surprised themselves yeah. and it was really interesting to me that Thor Lucy and Sam all won the throw at 19 feet yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but Thor looked like he could have gone on. Well, Thor's record with a different implement but the same weight is 21.3 feet. So, and like if you look at the clearance, it was probably going up at around 21 feet when yeah. on his final it, throw. It's so. so good having Thor back. Oh, it really is good. Yeah. I think by the time the Rogue Invitational comes along and he's had another sort of half a year to really work on his pressing, he's going to be a beast. Yeah. Ashley Hooper in the house. Hi, hey, Ashley. Ashley. Hope you had a fun weekend watching from home with the baby. I said, you got to get that baby a passport. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sarah says, thank you for your hard work, Lizzie. Ah, you're very welcome. We had a great time. Someone Can... said, how come for press the dumbbell with his left injured pec? He's just left-handed. So yeah. trying it right-handed for someone that's left-handed just feels absolutely odd <laughs> not everyone not can everyone do can it, do it both hands. some guys this is lucas oh there he is <laughs> any tip any weight over bar tips apparently i suck at it <laughs> i certainly don't think you suck but you're exceptionally good at everything else buddy i'm so, so glad like i know you know it was bobby thompson who ended up losing out on the podium but i'm so glad that didn't cost him the podium completely because it yeah. felt like it might and i'd heard he was Bird the right is... person to come top three, you know top three in yeah that yeah in terms of consistency and you know i'd heard that oh deadlift's a weakness i thought oh no the poor bloke like this is going to be a disaster 350 for seven reps well, that was apparently his competition pb lucas correct me if i'm wrong for one rep, I've heard that was your competition PB, and you went out and did it seven times. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's... That was impressive. Yeah, really just, crazy. Uh, yeah, like we've just said, I mean, you know, just great to see a, a, a new top-level athlete that, that, that kind of performs, that, you know, you, you get athletes that they're good and they can look good in, in comps, and then you, they get that chance and they falter. Yeah. He, he was a big, big-time player. Oh, yeah, no, he... Like composed, professional, he was yeah. great. Andres, thank you for the super chat. How it's Bobby? The deadlift took quite a toll on him. Bobby is fine. He's yeah. um Bobby actually got ill after the Arnold. So, we all did. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people got ill after the Arnold. Yeah. Um, and basically for two weeks he's just not been able to train at all. He's lost weight, he's struggled to eat. Uh, I'm not making any excuses here, but this is just fact. Yeah, yeah he's um, genuinely and, and, probably said. You know, I'm sure he's not the only one. But we saw a lot of athletes ended up having to pull out. Um, so he was just a bit depleted by the time the deadlift came round. He banged out seven reps with 350 kilos, no suit, in those conditions. The caught by Magnus. But yeah, Magnus was straight up there. <laughs> yeah, I was um, impressed. I've never so seen him. He, so he fast. just needs a few days of taking it easy and then, you know, getting his food right, and Bobby will be back to his best. Look at this sausage. Hello, sausage. I'm trying to give her a calming cuddle. Indeed, we totally agree, Alex. Lucas does deserve a world's invite after that weekend. Mm. Yeah, lots of you agree that Lucas was awesome. Uh, congrats, Lucas. <laughs> there we go. And Tell he has his own channel, so obviously after this live, do not leave the live. Go and subscribe to and Lucas's we, channel. I spoke to Lucas, and we are going to get him on Talking Strong ah, at some point. Nice. So go. be good to good to have that uh, chat with him and really find out a bit more. Toby. Toby's been with us for 12 months. Thank you. You're already buddy. really enjoyed this weekend's competition. Ah, thank you for your continued support, Toby. Here is some puppy talks. You've been offending the Americans, Lizzie. No American wants to be British. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with us? <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. Golden Retrievers are British. Well, they're Scottish, actually. They are. <laughs> Lizzie, mm-hmm. your vids are better than the live stream. Ah, oh, they're absolutely not, Andrew, but you're very sweet. Thank you. I think, um, and do you know what? I thought, like, I haven't obviously watched the whole live stream, but visually, I thought it looked great. I know people were disappointed that there wasn't, like, the commentary and the graphics, but it wasn't a rogue production. It was, you know, it was always going to be like quite a raw stream, but I actually, I thought it was good. Yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't seen it, but haven't from, seen anything, have you? from um, comments I've seen, people enjoyed it. Yeah. So that was good to see or hear. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? Benjamin, thank you very much for the super chat. Thank Went to the Benjamin. Arnold in Columbus a few weeks ago. My first strongman comp surprised how high energy it was. Like a concert, is this normal for strongman comps or is this unique to the Arnolds? I would say it's normal for strongman yeah, competitions normal. these days. Um, strongman is growing in popularity and fans come and they make noise and that's what we want. You know, we want the, we want that atmosphere. Mm. We want, um, you know, people to be enjoying it and, yeah. and you know, have a, have a party while you're there. It's, yeah. it's not, um, you know, snooker or something. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. I, as someone that sort of started Strongman a long time ago when there was really no crowds, I always enjoyed performing in front of a crowd and a crowd that gets behind the athletes. It just allows you, or it almost forces you to raise your level mm. because you kind of just, it, it kind of raises you, you kind of get those like the hairs sticking up on the back of your neck yeah. that kind of, fight or flight sensation and you want to you, you feel like i can't not perform in front yeah. of these people um so yeah more noise the better bigger crowds more noise we want that mm. <laughs> can we have the dog on the stream she is here monica she can have tau sorry she'd she's hiding behind you covered coming. behind uh, by the go. um graphics are you okay lucas she's was so awesome sorry. reminds me a little of graham hicks we need to see graham back to his best don't we yeah definitely Oh, there she is. She's a beautiful girl. Hey, Matty, this is something that um, will be up and available fairly soon. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be like a cheaper option I have where you don't have the communication on a regular basis with me. But um, lots of programming, of lots of resources, lots of um, videos, etc., that you'll have access to um, from me and my team. And, um, yeah, there's there's... Big meeting going on about it this week, but um, stay tuned. Victor says, Lars, how can Mitch be so extremely good at every single thing? Must be super <laughs> frustrating yeah, for his opponents. You need to talk about Mitch. Like, he won, and we haven't even mentioned him yet. <laughs> well, he's just getting to that level where he just is very, very good. <laughs> he's very, very good. I feel, I feel bad for Mitch because there's almost an expectation at this point that He'll win. That's the problem when you're a great. Yeah. And, um, you know, the likes of Brian Shaw have had to go through that. Thor, Zdrinus, mm. Marius Pudzianowski, all these, the, the greats of the sport are great for a reason. And when you are great, there is a target on your back. Everyone wants to beat yeah. you. But he rises to, to the occasion. That's three big wins in a row for Mitch. Yeah. Um, we are narrowing the weaknesses out completely. Yeah. I think it's and 15 podiums in a row now, is it? 15 podiums. I think yeah. he's got like a 50% win rate now. He has. He's won 50%. I think he's done... So that eight... He's won eight international competitions now. He's done 16. And that puts him into, like, a, I think the top 25 of all time Yeah. in terms of international wins. But when you look at the comps, he's won. Arnold's twice. The world's strongest man. Rogan's he's won four. Big, big major yeah, competitions. Yeah, majors, yeah. He, he's establishing himself as, as one of the best. And oh. I think... If he can continue this, who knows how high he can go up in you know in that list? Something maybe we can look at. Her. I think her Something's, bone is under there. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Mitch was amazing. Uh, I'm mega proud of Mitch. Um, as probably most of you know, he's doing amazing things for you know himself, but for the sport as well. And um, he'll continue. He he he's. He he's at that point now. He's he's won everything there is to win. Now he wants to be one of the best of all time, which is good because it keeps him motivated. And I think Thor coming back has been good for him. He, he's been training hard for these comps, knowing that Thor's coming back. And um, you know, there's big battles to come. There's still some amazing athletes out there. Tom Stoltman, um, Evan Singleton, Martins. If he can get him back to it, you know, hopefully Martins will give himself a bit of a kick up the backside after the Arnold's. He's I spoke to him. He's hungry. He wants to, 
he's, he's trying to find that hunger again, which is, it is hard as a champion, but if he can kind of light that fire, mm. Martins is, is amazing. Yeah, maybe the Arnolds will have lit yeah. his fire more. Yeah. yeah. And um, Mateusz. Mateusz is yeah. kind of coming back into form. Hopefully Alexi gets Alexi back into Trey's form. training hard again. Yeah. You know, there's, um, oh God, there's so many great athletes about. Lucas Hatton. <laughs> yeah, Lucas yeah. Hatton, Matt Rag. Matt Rag. <laughs> there you go. Just loads. Is there anyone you would love to coach, asks Pam, that you haven't had the chance to? Um, I'm so busy with clients that I coach. I, I, I never really think about coaching other people. Um, I had this question a few weeks ago, and like, I'd love to work with maybe Ian Bibby if he was hungry, but I, I'd rather work with someone that wants to to put the work in. I, and this is no disrespect to Ian Bibby. I absolutely love It's the not man. that he doesn't want to. He He's just has, super busy yeah. and has so many other things. That I think Strongman isn't his number one focus. No. Um, for me, uh, whether they're world champions or you know people just getting into the sport, I prefer that that commitment and, and you know just want to better yourself. It's um, it's more rewarding to work with people that uh, you know you see that passion for it. Yeah, he's just got so much going on yeah. and a lot of responsibility in uh, Burkina Faso. Uh, Dalton, thank you for the members' comments. Shout out to Liz for getting the videos out so fast. Ah, uh, thank you, Dalton. I went back to the. I mean, it was great on the first day because it finished about two p.m. our time, yeah. didn't it? So I locked myself in the room until about six, seven, and I whacked out five videos, <laughs> and then um, <laughs> and then it was off to dinner. <laughs> We had a lovely Vietnamese meal, didn't we? Did. We did. We had a, a nice meal with yeah. good friends. Yeah, it was good. Oh, God, do you remember that drunk gang? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As we were going, um, there's this uh, big place called Resorts World. Anyone who know, who's who been near the NEC will know. It's like a shopping mall and lots of um, restaurants there. And we'd had, we had a reservation, and we were trying to get there nice and quick. And some fairly drunk guy is like, to Mitch, he's like, oh, you're the world's strongest man. Can I have a picture? And Mitch is like, oh, yeah, yeah, come on then. Yeah, 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 can I have a picture? And suddenly there was like loads of them, wasn't there? And we were just like, no, no, let's get out. <laughs> it's, like, it's nothing worse than drunk people it's, when you're sober. Well, and... it's, it's not even that. It's when people are rude. Yeah, and they were being a bit pushy, weren't like, they? Mitch and, and all the strong men are so friendly with, yeah. with most fans, but just be nice and yeah. polite. If you're polite, it's so easy for us to, to kind of be nice back and want to have yeah. a photo. And almost everyone is polite. Oh, 99% of people are. So. Yeah. Yeah. Puppy. Jane, thank you for the super chat. The time of Mitch yoke run compared to everyone else. Do you know how long his yoke run took? It didn't take long. It didn't take long. Well, we know that. Yeah. <laughs> but do we have an official time on it? I, I don't know. There, there probably no. is an official time because they, they were taking time to split times. But um, Yeah, I have to time my yeah, footage. Mitch is um, exceptionally fast yeah. when it comes to you. Mitch is the best ever at the yoke. There's no question about it. Um, I'm someone that could have been in that claim before Mitch came along, and there is no comparison. He's, he's in so a league good, of his yeah. own. And do you know what? We did one yoke session. That's all he's done, training. It's the, that's how it goes with those natural strengths, well, isn't you're, it? You're naturally athletic. And, you know, yeah. it, do you know what? Something me and Mitch both agree on is you don't need huge amounts of, of prep on, like, events. I think some people overdo events. And, you know, you want that familiar, familiarity, but sometimes you can get too familiar to your own kit. Mm. And this is something that people do. We see them, they're amazing on their bits of kit, but they can't adapt to different bits of kit. Whereas both Mitch and myself like to, to focus on certain movements that make you athletic and make you kind of strong. Because yeah. sometimes people are just trying to be so technical that they forget that this is a strength sport and strength comes first. And, you know, you might look at Mitch and say, oh, he, but he's like super technical man just works hard he's got ridiculous leg power and he has the ability to adapt to, to different um implements mm -hmm. and what you know talking about the greats that we just mentioned like Zadrinus, like brian shaw like thor like you know marius pajanowski they perform under pressure time and time again and mitch is one of those guys as well that when he has to he can kind of dig that little bit deeper and and, and pull something out the the hat Levi asking if we got to see any other parts of the uh, shows, like the convention while we were there. I didn't see nothing. <laughs> I didn't get past the silverback stand <laughs> because um, we were busted. Well, we didn't I, get there till Friday anyway. I we? actually went and, and had a little wander on the Saturday, um, which was lovely. But 
I didn't really get to see much. You, you go out there and, and it's it's nice meeting fans. So I went on to Mitch's stand for a little bit. I had a little wander around. I went to, um, I picked up that frame that was out and about. You got as far as I did. That yeah. was the, the silverback yeah. stand, yeah. But Sunday, the strongman just over around. We didn't have time to, to go yeah. out at all. No. Um, but it, it's, it was hard to, to really see what was going on. But from what I've seen on social media and stuff, people had a great time. Yeah, I would have loved to see um, more of it. <laughs> Especially, like, I was really interested to see the UK convention, like, compared, compared to the to USA yeah. one, just to see, like, which companies are more present yeah. and all that. Just, this is something I did hear nerd. about the live stream. There was no crowd noise. Yes. So it seemed like it was dead. It so was just, like, was mics no... on you guys. Ah, no okay. mics on the stage, no mics pointing towards the crowd yeah, or anything. Yeah, so you lose that kind of atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. It, I think um, it sounded weirdly quiet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the crowd noise. Yeah, love you guys, but puppy mats my heart. I don't know if you'd agree if you saw her right now. <laughs> uh, I thought Columbus was more chill than Welsh looks man, or sure, my throat never even started bleeding. Christ, <laughs> how old is Lars? Very How old, old am I? He is 41. Uh, yeah, a few people saying it's a shame they couldn't hear the crowd. Mm -mm. I, I've got a few things I've kind of written down that I wanted to talk about. Okay. Next one I want to talk about. Go on. Is Zadrinus' is refereeing. Yeah. Now, Zadrinus <laughs> came up to me after he disallowed Mitch's um, dumbbell and he said, oh, how was my refereeing? I said it was amazing. Zadrunas is an amazing referee. And, you know, when we get any bad calls in Strongman, fans go nuts. We all go nuts. You know, we, we all do. And my answer is I never blame the athlete. Mm. If an athlete is told to put it down, they are going to take the rep that they get. Zadrunas does not allow that to happen. No. <laughs> and I love that. He disallowed Mitch's rep, and then Mitch is like trying to get the referees to swap. <laughs> Magnus laughs. Mitch is laughing. I'm laughing. Zadrina stone face, <laughs> focused on his job. Yeah, the man is a machine. He is an amazing referee. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's human. Everyone can make a mistake, but for the most part, he's very focused on what he's doing. Yeah, he's looking for for fully locked out reps. I think all the athletes massively respect oh, him. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> that's not the toilet. <laughs> 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 the athletes respect him uh we all respect Zadrunas and his calls were superb I'm, I'm sure most of you that watched would agree and Zadrunas said also um his issue with it with Mitch's it, it just wasn't under control and it wasn't it, it was the right call yeah. right um where are we Anthony thank you for the super chat how is Andrea she looked good but seemed to be having a hard times uh andrea is is doing good she had a great first day she was in the lead after day one um weight for height isn't particularly the best event for her in the world and she needs to work on the dumbbell yeah there's there's um dumbbell training uh andrea's had a lot going on personally i'm not going to go into details on it that's that's for her but super proud of andrea always you know she she struggled at the arnold's in ohio and she's been feeling, you know, beat up, but she came, put on a performance again, you know, was in with a chance. All, all the, the women are so close right now. Uh, it chops and changes in each competition. They're all beating each other on different events. And I'm I'm always proud of Andrew. She works hard. We're into a little bit of an off-season phase now just to try and give her body a little bit of a break. And then she's got some comps later in the year that she wants to focus on. But, yeah, she's, she's all good. Obviously, like all of us, We've all got personal things that, that go on sometimes. And I think as as fans, we don't realize that. Whereas as a coach, I see even the very best uh, have, you know, things that go on and affect them. And sometimes it's nice to know, I think. I, I don't mind kind of telling you guys because I think as an up-and-coming athlete, it's nice to know the best guys and girls have a bad day. Yeah. The, the life isn't always perfect. It's not always every session is smashing it in the gym and, you know, going to war and all that bollocks. It's... Sometimes just dragging yourself to the gym, getting through a session, making sure you get your food in. Some days you're not going to get your food and you miss it. What do you do? Do you give up? No, you don't give up. You start again. You keep going uh, and keep pushing hard. And you, you get yourself to the comp and you try as hard as you can. And, and that's what all these amazing athletes do. 
Um, well, we're sad to see Victoria Long get injured. Yeah, obviously that was yes. two weeks ago. If you haven't seen it already, Loz and her had a really great chat. They did a Talking Strong Man, Strong Woman. Um, I think it was the week following, wasn't it? Yeah. J-Mart, thank you so much for the super chat. Assuming Thor comes back 100% healthy, how would you rank him and Mitch in terms of different pull, push, carry, arm over arm, i.e. the major lifts? Maybe time for a new Mitch strategic approach or more muscles? So, like, how would you compare them in the major sort of strongman movements? Um, Thor is a better deadlifter. Uh, Mitch is a better presser. I, although Thor's pressing at his best is very good. I think um, it becomes very it close even, between them. Mm. I'd say Mitch is a better squatter. Um, and Thor is a very good squatter. So, like, again, very, very close. Um, Thor is better at stones. Thor is going to be better at stones. Thor's a better thrower. Thor's better at uh, like a truck pull type movement. Although Mitch is good, I think. Mitch I think Thor is. He did, but even Mitch and me have discussed this. I think Thor would be more consistent in a truck pull. Yeah, than Mitch. I, I think Mitch yeah. at the moment. Uh, truck pull varies comp to comp mm. because of how heavy yeah, it is and, yeah. stuff. and and i think just based on on what four's done he's got that consistency on that kind of event mitch is mitch better, is better at any speed moving type event um yokes farmers walks etc loading mitch? i think mitch would be better at loading as well although four is very good i think both of them at 100 percent is a very competitive matchup grip grip they are close the, they, they're pretty level mm. um again not too much in it there's a lot of events i think that they're very close at and then there's a few that i think each have an advantage over each other i think thor at his best is the best strong man we've ever seen in 2018 18. um and i stand by that for that year he's the best strong man Package. we've ever seen um right now his pressing is down um and that will cost him against someone like mitch who consistently just picks up points on every single event yeah. but as i said if thor can bring his pressing up he's a big problem for us um in terms of winning competitions and i hope that thor does get to his best because i think a motivated in shape thor pushes mitch to new levels and commitment and, and let's thor. remember me saying all that stuff and you know probably rightly saying that thor at his best is better Thor at his best was 2018. He started Strongman 2010, something like that. Yeah. Mitch is into his second pro year, yeah. third pro year. Um, so it's quite scary how good Mitch is at this point in his career. Yeah. And, you know, how motivated he is to keep going could depend on on people like Thor. Thor coming through and really challenging I, him. I, you know, there's a, there's a few. Tom Stoltman, obviously, yeah, is, of course, is, yeah. is unbelievable. And there, there's always guys that... <laughs> When an athlete gets really good, it brings everyone else up as well because mm. that's the chasing back. So nothing is stationary. Things change all the time. A year can change a lot of things. Injuries can change things. So all you can do as the athlete is, is make the most of the time that, that you're competing. And that's why Mitch is competing so often. Yeah. You know, he wants to... You don't know, do you? No. What's around the corner? So uh, Another message from Lucas. Appreciate the support, guys. I've been overwhelmed with messages and follows. Feeling very blessed to be part of the community. Jumping off to grab dinner with the family in London. Ah, oh, nice. Enjoy, enjoy the rest your of your stay. stay in London, guys. Yes. Uh, there we go. Um, Thor is such a nice, honourable competitor. It was nice to see him come out afterwards and show respect to Mitch, was it? But he's done nothing but show respect to Mitch, no. to be fair. When he did the talking strong round with you before the Arnold's Ohio, he was talking Thor about Mitch. shows respect to pretty much most athletes. <laughs> pretty much most. <laughs> Some people don't like each other. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, can you describe a proper dumbbell lockout, I'll say? That's up to whatever the referees decide is the dumbbell lockout. And what it explicitly is described in the if, rules if, as well. If I'm the referee, I'm looking for the elbow to be fully locked out and the dumbbell be balanced. Yeah. Like if it's falling away, is kind of, I don't think that's locked out. What I think is irrelevant, what you think is irrelevant, what matters is the referee mm. abiding by the certain rules. And this is the biggest issue. There was an issue this weekend where rules in competitions change mm. so unless you're in the rules meeting and you know what the rules are 
it's a bit confusing. And it's why I've many times said I wish there was a rule book for strongman so that all of us were on the same page. We'd always know there'd be no. But question. unfortunately, right now, there isn't that. So, you know, world's strongest man might have their own set of rules. Arnold's might have their own set of rules. You know, different comps do different things. Rightly or wrongly, that's not the discussion right here. Um, but all that matters is that the referee makes the athlete abide by the rules of that particular competition. Mm. If the referee gives the rep, we can all be mad about it. But if the referee gives it, the referee gives it. Um, that's why I really like Zadrunas' refereeing. He was strict with everyone. There wasn't any favoritism. It was all 100% every. Uh, he's focused all the time on what he's doing, which mm. I, I think is very good. Um, 11 seconds for the yoke. Slow. But to be fair to Mitch. No, they don't start under the yoke, do they? No. And also, let's let's remember this, right? He's done one training session and he wore lifters because he yeah, was focused the on the dumbbell. dumbbell. Mitch can be faster. He if can, it was yeah. just a yoke. I think it's really interesting though at the Arnold and at Rogue, when you um when they have Combine a yoke, you events. don't you don't start under the yoke though. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. So getting set is part of that. And we did see some people make that mistake and people yeah. that are great at yoke. Did you see Ma talking of good refereeing, Maggie was like making sure everyone was behind the line. Yeah, they, like, yeah. A lot of them were trying to creep in front of the line and he wouldn't start until they went back. It's Maggie would be stick. Yes. <laughs> He's funny. Yeah. <laughs> the refereeing this weekend was good. Where are we? Does Mitch Hooper do anything wrong? Ask his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she could say. Uh, Andreas. Ah, Mitch Hooper, 11 seconds for the oak. Second was round 18. Around 18 seconds. Okay, so the second fastest was around 18. Thank you for the super chat and for uh, letting us know. What place did Oscar? I think Oscar ended up in sixth. Six, seven, eight. They're nine guys, isn't it? Eight. Um, round eight. Up. Then, yeah, he was six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Did he, then it was Gavin. Did he, beat, it was did, he didn't beat Maxime, did he? He did. Oh, he did. Yeah, so he Maxime fifth. beat him. Oh, Max, oh, Maxime beat Oscar. Oh, yeah. sorry. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Confusing. Guys, me. I'm really not helping today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, where are we? Callum with the members comment. Well, 16 months. How's both of your training going? How's your training going? Um, I had a fun session last week. I'm pretty sure I damaged my glute. <laughs> <laughs> what did um, you do? Squats. Right. I was rushing. Okay. I didn't warm up properly because the puppy was there with me. And yeah, that was it was my own silly fault. I sort of jumped straight in. But you have spoken to some of the strong women about going to do some sessions with them. I was supposed to be doing a session with Rebecca Roberts and um her friend Laura. I... <laughs> oh, and Nicola as well. Yeah. Oh, I don't know though. I don't know. <laughs> So losses like it would be funny. I was like, yeah. it's not funny when you're the one uh, that's the laughing stock. <laughs> so what's this? Um, do I coach all my athletes? Click on this. Do you coach all of your athletes or just your top level athletes? I coach all my athletes. Every single one? Yes. Um, Some athletes have access to my mobile phone. Not every single athlete does. Um, Usually, the longer you've been with me, the more chance you've got of getting access to that. <laughs> because that was the original method. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, yes, I coach all my athletes, and um, it's uh, a very rewarding and very hard and stressful job at times. <laughs> what was the conflict with Hooper's frame carry? Someone was arguing that he dropped it. Uh, some people just didn't understand the rules. That was, it was a, a genuine mistake. And, um, sorted very very quickly yeah so the rule just to be really clear was you're allowed one drop per length and obviously they were allowed to put it down at the end i I, I think going around. forward it probably would be better to just have the time limit and as many drops as you need to go as far as you can yeah maybe yeah but, yeah so it was quite funny though because mitch didn't actually drop it he thought he passed the line but stevie shanks yeah. wasn't 100 percent if yeah. he had no he so, hadn't like yeah like he, he yeah. hadn't passed the line he dropped it short by accident yeah and then so he was forced to lift put, put it, it over, over the line. Yeah. And, but and then, then as soon as you lift, you have another drop going. Yeah, yeah. So you're that resets it, yeah. Like if you look at what, the way Oscar went. Um, he dropped it a couple of people. in both friends, yeah. yeah. Oh, dear. It's just a, a mistake that once they realised. <laughs> misunderstanding. Was, was, yeah, yeah. Sort of. Josh, thank you for the super chat. Do you think these mid-pack athletes can ever win a major? Bobby Thompson, Evan Singleton, Evan Evans? 
I mean, Evans, Evans Nolan, Nolan. Uh, Gav Bilton, etc. No disrespect, men. I just haven't seen big improvement. Um, what do you class as a major first? I mean, if you're classing Shaw, Arnold's Worlds, Rogue. and Rogue as the the four majors, um, it's difficult. Oh, that, that's the honest, honest answer. I think Singleton definitely can. Um, I think Bobby with the right events can. I think a lot of guys with the right events. Now, the issue is when those right events come up. Mm. It's And yeah. being better at them than the likes of Tom and Mitch. Yeah. And, and Thor now. <laughs> Thor, you know, Martins, Novikov, um, obviously not in shape at the moment. Well, they are in shape, but that's the wrong thing to say. But like Tom and Mitch Maybe not, they're very are doing best better. Right now. But let's remember, Singleton's beaten both of them. Yeah, you know, multiple times at Giants Live. Shows. I wouldn't call Evan a mid pack guy personally. No, I, I wouldn't. We either. had him as like third in the world, and our I, 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 I would have I would have Evan as a top five guy in the world. Yeah, I think Bobby is a six to ten. I think Evans, Nana, and Bilton are not quite top ten yet. I think Bilton is knocking on the door. Evans will get there, but he's very very new. Um, but yeah, being top ten in the world is tough. I mean, you look at like someone like Oscar Zilkowski, who's competed at the two Arnold shows. You'd put him in any other show, he's a competitive athlete. But you go to the Arnold's or the final of World's Strongest Man or the Rogue Invitational, you're against the best guys in the world. And the we're talking like the top ten guys in the world, really. You can be an amazing strong man and look very, very average in a lineup like that. And we we see it. You see guys like Kevin Ferris, you see guys like, like Rob Kearney, to be fair, you know, they'll go and they just look average. But I promise you, you put those guys in a normal international competition, they are world-class athletes. Ivers, Ivers wins a lot of big yeah. competitions, but in a competition with the 10 best in the world, he can look very average. average. Yeah. And that is not an average strong man. He's unbelievably good. I, I have huge respect for every single one of them. But you've got to remember when you're against the best, it's tough. And with guys like Tom and you know Mitch, who are so talented and so consistent, mm. um, and like you know, Martins when he's in shape four coming back, it's difficult to win these shows. It really is. Just sniffing around. <laughs> but impossible, definitely not. You know, it just takes good prep, a little bit of luck, and, and things can go your way. To win shows, you have to be well prepared, you have to be in the comp. You know, a lot of people kind of <laughs> avoid competing because they're like, "Oh, I'm not, I'm not ready." Sod that. Get get to the damn. These aren't competition. necessarily the top guys. Well, <laughs> no. but like, just get to the competition. You know, I, I I won eight international shows. Okay, I was never. People wouldn't see me as like one of the best, but I've beaten every single top level athlete pretty much on my day. I'm not one of the greats of all time. But I was a very good. I was like these guys. I was like a Bobby Thompson. You were a mid. I, was a, I wasn't. A, you know, I was an elite level strongman. <laughs> but I wasn't a Brian Shaw or a Zadrinus, you know, or a Thor. But I have beaten those guys yeah. with the right events where I was. I would, you know, I could just raise that level a little bit sometimes. And those guys are in that position. Speaking of refing, what happened with Angelica on the deadlift? She was disallowed the second rep. Because um, she lifted she, before the signal. Yeah, yeah. So she didn't she, wait for the lift um, command. Yeah, I had to kind of check because I wasn't sure as well. You can um, see it quite clearly on my deadlift footage. If you look at the second rep, she touches down. I've got to see what's going on. So and then before just, he says yeah. lift. So she, she just didn't wait for She just The rules were she had to wait for the lift command. She didn't wait for that. She got disallowed a rep. It's... Uh, you know, uh, it's a bit of a schoolboy error, really. Yeah, um, she's but new. she's so new to it, she'll learn from it and and come back even better. I mean, first and second in the last two comps. I know she's it awesome, and and she could have, and she could have, you know, she could have won. She got that rep, she would have won. She's an amazing athlete and um, <laughs> getting better all the time. Uh, Who's the strongest ever, Big Z or Thor? Uh, to the greatest ever strongman, in my opinion, is, is Adrinus. Um, and I, I would say Brian is the second. Thor, for me, is a little bit lower because he hasn't won as many, you know, competitions, uh, the big competitions. He's not as decorated. How, uh, yeah. However, he's still going. So <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> who, who knows where he ends up? Um, you know, my, my argument for, for, Brian, uh, for, for Brian and Thor is, 
it's quite just, I think. And I, I could understand people saying that Brian's number one, but for me personally, it's Zadrinus. Uh, and I've got an argument for it. And like I said, you can argue for other people, but it's hard to really see past those two as, as one and two. Slippery. <laughs> and if you could have looked back at me saying Thor is the best guy we've ever had for one year, he was. 2018, I think that's the best strongman we've ever seen, but it was just one year. Um, when you're looking at the greatest of all time, it's that length of career. It's what you win over that time. Mm. Um, so there's more to it than just being really good for, for one competition or one year. And that's where Mitch has to, you know, he, Mitch is amazing right now, but he's got to have that career to, to go into the likes of a, a Brian or a Thor. That longevity. Uh, or, a, or is a Drinus. What happened to Gab on the yoke? It was it was like a it's nerve a knee, pain, yeah. a knee issue. Um, hopefully nothing serious. Thankfully, his wife is a nurse. It's <laughs> so funny out back. He's like, I'll just put some cream on it. She's like, Gab, you remember you're married to a nurse. Mm. <laughs> Mitch is no way a better squatter. I would argue that. Like, and, and trust me, uh, Thor is an amazing squatter, particularly for one rep. I think for reps, Mitch is 100% better. Um, and in strongman, it's very rare that you see a one rep max squat. Yeah. Martins beat Thor in the squat, world strongest man. 2019. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thor hasn't actually won the squat of worlds, I don't believe. No, he hasn't. He's a very, he's a very, very good squatter. Um, but Mitch is an exceptionally good squatter. He no one's not... seen him squat in competition uh, before. Uh, I, I'm talking about squatting like for reps and, and strong man, like his endurance. We've never even tried to do a one rep max for Mitch because firstly, the risk isn't worth the reward because mm. squatting one rep max is just not that important in strong man. Um, unless it comes up in a competition, we're not going to focus on it. But Mitch's ability to rep out on squats is tremendous. And, um, you know, I, I think he could be anyone at a squat for reps. Mm. Um, there you go. Thank you for the super chat, Patu Botti. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you for making strongman content and growing the sports with it. Sending my love to all in the scene, especially you two. Uh, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Just got my hairbrush. <laughs> Doing me, Maggie's magic wand. Yes, <laughs> waving it around. <laughs> yeah, you look good with that. <laughs> Maggie's yeah. funny. Yes. Hedgehog, thank you for gifting memberships. Thank you very much. If you get gifted a membership, go and check out some of the membership. But you've got to get a um a few more posts that people love, the stickers things. Oh called. yeah, yeah, some more emojis and yeah. and stuff. Yes, yes, that's it. I couldn't remember her surname. Where are we going? Nicola Butchen. It, how how do you say her surname? Butchen. Butchen. Bouchon. Bouchon. <laughs> She's Scottish. Yeah? She doesn't sound very Scottish. <laughs> do, you know, do you know of any comps for blind athletes also trying to be the first to walk the Dinny Stones? Oh, wow. That would be cool to, to be the first blind person to do, to walk the Dinny Stones. Mm. They do have, um, well, disabled strongest man. Um, pretty sure there is one or two blind guys that compete in that. Um, we'll try and find out. I, uh, Magnus is is a great person to talk to about the disabled side of things. Um, so maybe he can help us. Maybe Monica is in the chat and can can help. Uh, someone's saying here that that's a wild term of the use mid pack. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty rough, wasn't it, for those mm. guys? Um, where are we? Thomas Evans. So how do you train for an event you don't know the proper rules? You, strongman, we didn't even used to know what the events were when we get to a competition. <laughs> yeah, to be fair. <laughs> Just be strong and athletic and you can adapt to anything. You're going to learn the rules, you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to know the events and the rules beforehand. But sometimes you've just got to be prepared for, for anything. It's um, nice if we can kind of be well prepared and, and, and know exactly what we're coming up with. But one of the th reasons that makes the top guys so good is their ability to adapt. Mm. So I'm just trying to it's like change your mindset of thinking I've, I've just got to know everything. 
you, you find the lower level athletes want to know the diameter of everything. They want to know how high the things are that they're going to be lifting off. The top athletes don't care about those things so much. What are you She's going to pull that lamp down in a second. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, where are we? <laughs> Focus on getting stronger because being strong is, is always an advantage. Um. Matt Rag looks like it's going to be amazing. Matt Rag's dead. Can't wait to see video. what Matt Rag does. Yeah. And uh, Janasha looking good in there. Oh, what did he do? She doesn't like you. She doesn't want you to pick her up. Oh, dear. What is it? What is it? <laughs> um, where were we? In the gym now, coach, I'm saying. There you go. Joshua, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Lars, curious as to how you manage coaching athletes during the same competition against each other, remaining unbiased, avoiding jealousy, etc. So uh, when I coach someone, my goal is to get them as well prepared as possible. It's their job on the day to excel and beat the other athletes. So, um, there have been situations where certain people have approached me before about coaching, um, but they don't want me to coach them because I work with other athletes, and that's totally understandable. But I do my absolute best to focus on making you better. And I say this to every single person that I coach, whether you are the world's strongest man or you are a complete beginner. Many of my clients can testify of me saying this because it's my own philosophy when I competed as well. I will focus on helping you get better. You should focus on you getting better. Don't worry about anything else. Just focus on on improving. My, that's my job when a, an athlete comes to me. I feel like I can help you improve. And um, you then, as the athlete, have to be the competitive one when it comes to competition. We will work on tactics. We'll work on, you know, performing at your absolute best. But if, if, if uh, you know, one of my athletes beats another of my athlete, that's it's never going to be some kind of jealousy, you know. Pretty much all my elite level athletes, they all get on. No, well, most no. of them get on. No, yeah. <laughs> um, but there's no, you know, they understand that I I give them all a hundred percent of my time, and um, you know, focus. I'll, I'll I'll go through things with each of them. Um, if something is an issue, we'll we'll sort things out. Uh, so it's never a problem for me, and it hasn't been a problem for for them. So hopefully it won't be in the future. Uh, but I can understand if someone just wanted to have one athlete in a competition, it's just difficult because, you know, if you're a good coach, the most top level coaches coach a few good guys or, or good women, and you'll end up having two of your athletes in a competition sometimes. Um, you're a big fan of Andrea. That's nice to hear. She is doing okay. She's ready to, to get back in the gym and just kind of, be away from competition for a few months. Being strong is always an advantage. 100% it is. He did indeed, which um, upset me because I did 550 pounds for 20 reps. So he'll probably have to go and beat that soon as well. <laughs> it didn't actually upset me. I was very happy for him. Don't worry. She spat it out. It's, she was pulling the tag off of the um, bottom of the chair. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They find everything. <laughs> Dear. I'm mid-pack. Mid yeah, I understand what you meant. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So not the people necessarily being picked out to win. Like I said, you know, as an athlete, you've got to just focus on you getting better. And people are at different stages of their careers. So Tom, Thomas Evans is, is a good example of someone that hasn't done that many competitions and the competitions he has done have all been super elite level. He could probably do with some slightly lower level comps to, to pick up some wins and, 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 you know, maybe a bit of confidence because it is hard to just go in against the very best all the time. Sometimes just doing those slightly lower level comps, it, it builds that, uh, that confidence in yourself. It gives you experience at competing. And then you can come back into the, the higher level comps and, you, and you're even better. Mm. Um, what was the most impressive lift of the weekend? I think, oh, um, I mean, Sam on the dumbbell 
always impresses me. Yeah. She's she's so good. Yeah. Um, Especially like after that yoke, she's an under 82 kilo athlete. So to carry yeah, 300 well, kilos first. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> that was impressive. Um, Lucas's log. Lucas's log was awesome. Mm. Uh, just, you know, I know Mitch equaled it in terms of reps, but the way Lucas did it was impressive for me. That was really good. Uh, Lucy's deadlift, she just made it look ridiculously easy. Yeah. Um, Thor's deadlift. Thor's deadlift was, was great. You know, I was impressed with Rauno because was he wasn't in great shape and his competition went real badly. And to, to have come out on the last event and still keep trying. And to go was, out first as well. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, uh, that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, I'd probably say either Sam's dumbbell or Lucas's log. Mm, I was really impressed with Sam and Lucy on the throw as well. Mm, definitely. Because mm. the women, they don't really normally do a max throw, do they? I'm sure most of them haven't been pushed like this, especially no. a one-handed one like mm, that on yeah. a totally new piece of kit. Yeah. Okay. Right, shall we call it a night then, Lozzie? It sure. is a school night mm -hmm. after all. Yeah, no um, problem at all. But thank you all for joining us. We, we've we got one more Arnold's-related video to come out, haven't we, I think? I don't know. Yeah, we okay. do. We do. <laughs> live. It's fine. Good stuff. <laughs> you sign it off, Lozzie. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the weekend. I hope you have an amazing week. Um, train hard if you're training. Be good. And, um Be good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a good night's sleep and be fresh and as a daisy for our next video, hopefully. But guys, thank you once again, as always, for joining us. We do appreciate it. We're closing in on 150,000 subscribers, yeah, which we're is literally very exciting. Away. So if you yeah. aren't subscribed already, please, if you like what we do, consider doing so. And we'll catch you guys soon. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.